there, guys. We're going to do some related rates problems today. Um, you absolutely need to have done 2.5 before getting into 2.6 because all of the implicit differentiation that we did in 2.5 is going to show up here in 2.6, and we're going to be doing word problems associated with it. Okay, let's start with, first off, find a related rate, like what the heck is a related rate, um, and write related rates to model real-life problems. So we've got real-life problems, and we want to model them using related rates. Here's our homework problems. Okay, real-life problems rarely involve just a single variable. Usually, there's several different variables. Um, a related rates problem is a real-life situation that's based on problems that change with respect to time. So as time goes on, other things are changing as well. Okay. Um, we can use derivatives, which is differentiating, to, um, uh, to actually solve them. Uh, we use implicit differentiation because it's either difficult sometimes to get one specific variable that we care about completely by itself, or we just don't feel like it. That's totally possible. We don't feel like getting a certain variable by itself. Okay. You're going to end up using a lot of different equations that you used way back in geometry. Let's start with this one, the volume of a cone. Okay. The volume of a cone, V, is going to equal, well, it's really similar to the volume of a cylinder. Okay, volume of a cylinder Okay. The base of a cylinder is a circle, so the area of a circle is pi r squared, and then you multiply that times the height of the cylinder. So that's volume of a cylinder. To make it a cone, you only need a portion of that. So the volume of a cone is exactly one-third of the volume of a cylinder. Okay. So that's how I remember all of this. It's just a third of uh, volume of a cylinder. Okay, we're going to take the derivative with respect to time. So you might notice that time t is not any of the variables that is on here. So what's going to happen is the size of this cone is going to change with respect to time. So the volume, the radius, the height are all going to change. So that might be like you're eating the ice cream cone and you start at the top and then you eat the actual cone. And as you make your way down, the radius is different. You know it's smaller at the bottom of a cone. The height is different because you've eaten this much of it. And the volume then is different because there's only this much left. Okay. So volume, radius, and height change with respect to time. Let's take derivatives. On the left-hand side, taking the derivative of volume with respect to time is going to be dv dt. On the right-hand side, we have a product rule. Now, you can look at this several different ways. You can look at it as 1 3rd pi r squared times h. You could rearrange stuff. You could put the pi over 3 to make that look more like a nice pretty coefficient. Um, but for the most part, we're going to do the product rule. So u prime v plus u v prime. So let's start out with u prime. We're going to take the derivative of 1 3rd pi r squared. r is our variable, but we're taking the derivative with respect to time. So we are going to need to use the chain rule. I will go ahead and put that pi over 3 so that it's kind of out of the way a little bit. Okay r squared. The derivative of r squared is going to be 2r, and then we're going to multiply it times the derivative of r with respect to t. That's our chain rule part, dr dt. Okay, times. Let's do h in pink just so it's a different color. Times h. So that's u prime v. And then it'll be plus u v prime. So pi over 3 r squared, that's u, times the derivative of h. h is just a normal letter, so when you take the derivative of h, you get 1, but chain rule says dh dt. 
needs to get multiplied there on the end. So it's one times dH dt, technically. Um, there's not really any way to nicely clean that up. So that is the derivative. It's kind of gross looking, right? We have dV dt, r, dr dt, h, r again, and then dH dt. So there's a whole bunch of different variables. That means that the problem is going to have to give us more information. Sometimes on volume of cone problems, specifically, they will give you a ratio of R to H. So these are a little bit tricky. R and H will have a ratio. And what's really nice about those is that R and H, as H decreases, R is also going to decrease. But as that happens, your triangle is going to be a similar triangle. So similar triangles say that if like, let's say H is three times R, then as H gets smaller, it's still gonna be three times, the height is gonna be three times the new radius. Okay, so you can write a relationship, which means that if, a, uh, if R is a third of H, you could put a third H here, or if H is three times R, you could put three R here. What that does is it gets rid of one of these two variables, which means, first off, you don't have to do product rule if you only have R's here. It also means that you won't have to do dr dt and dh dt. So we will do a volume of a cone problem at some point. Um, not today though, but you will need this formula somewhere. All right, in general, so this problem is not a word problem, but it is a related rates problem. So we give you a ton of information. We tell you dx dt equals two, which means the change in x with respect to time is two when x equals one. So if x equals one, the slope of x or the change of x is two. When x equals one, we want to know what is dy dt. Okay, so we're gonna take the derivative of y equals x squared plus three with respect to t. We know it's with respect to t because all of these little, air quotes, denominators have dt's in them. Okay, so let's do that. y equals x squared plus three. Take the derivative of every single term with respect to t. Derivative of y with respect to t. You're not just going to put y prime, it's going to be dy dt. Okay, derivative of y would just be 1, so it's 1 times dy dt. Equals, derivative of x squared is 2x, but since we're taking the derivative with respect to time, the chain rule says times dx dt. And then plus the derivative of 3. 3 we know its derivative is going to be zero because three is a constant. And then you won't have to use the chain rule because zero times anything is zero. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we are looking for dy dt. That's right here. That's what we are solving for. That means we need x and dx dt to both be numbers so that we can replace x and dx dt with those numbers. So dy dt equals two times x. It tells us in the problem x is 1 at this moment. So x is 1 times. When x is 1, we are told that dx dt is 2. So replace dx dt with 2. Now the only variable piece that we have is dy dt. So dy dt equals 2 times 1 times 2, which is 4. We were not given any kind of uh, labels, so we are done here. dy dt equals 4. You cannot just put y prime on problems that are with respect to time or any other weird variable down here. Um, and the reason on that is that normally y prime is just like dy dx. Okay, so anytime it's with respect to time, you will want to put the dt's on there. Okay, well, want might be strong. You need to. All right, air inflating into a balloon. These are really common problems that you'll come up with. 
Um, air is being pumped into a spherical balloon at a rate of 4.5 cubic feet per minute. Find the rate of change of the radius when the radius is two feet. So there's a lot of information there. Let's start by figuring out what we know. We know at this instant, the radius equals two feet. Let's also figure out what dr dt is. dr dt. You'll notice that as I do my side work over here with all of my figuring out what the variables are, I start with a letter and say what it is, and then right next to it, I put the d dt of whatever that letter is. So I organize all of my side work based on letter. So the original variable and then the rate for that variable. It says find the rate of change of the radius. Well, that's what we're looking for. So that's gonna be a question mark for now. But we know that r over t is going to be feet per, mm, looks like minute. So we know what the label of our answer is going to be. Okay, what else do we know? We know that we have a spherical balloon, a sphere. The rate of air being pumped in is 4.5 cubic feet per minute. Okay, so that sounds like a rate equals 4.5 cubic feet per minute. Okay. We know that T is measured in minutes, but what is going to be feet cubed? Feet cubed is going to be a volume. That means we're going to need some kind of volume over here. We might not actually need the number for volume. If you look back up at our volume of a cone equation, this equation, the V kind of disappeared because taking the derivative of V is going to be one times and then the chain rule says dV dt. So this guy's usually going to kind of cancel itself out, so you won't need the actual volume most of the time. Okay. But that means we will need the volume formula. So what is the volume of a sphere? Volume of a sphere. All right. If we multiply r times itself three times, we get r cubed. Okay. But this is a circle, so we're going to need a pi. And then we're going to put a four thirds in front of it. Four thirds pi r cubed. Okay. So that is our volume formula. We don't really care on this one. If you really wanna find the volume, you can plug in two here and simplify that out and find volume. But we don't care, and we'll see that here in a minute when we take the derivative. Okay, um, that's as much information as we have. Um, oh, we are told that the air is being pumped into the spherical balloon. So it sounds like the rate of change of the volume is a positive number. That's super important. So that probably means that the radius is increasing as well, right? If you've got a balloon and you're pumping air into it, the balloon gets bigger in volume and in radius. So we know that our radius is going to be a positive rate as well. All right, let's take a derivative over here. Derivative of V with respect to T is dV dt. That's going to equal, okay, over here. 4 pi over 3 is going to be our coefficient. If we multiply that times that 3 using the power rule, that 3 and that 3 are going to cancel out. So we're left with 4 pi r and then decrease that 3 by 1 to get a 2 times chain rule dr dt. This is usually the easiest one to forget is that like dr dt. But if you do forget it, that's the thing we're trying to find. So if it's missing, there's a problem. Okay, uh, let's plug some stuff in. We know that r is two feet at this very particular instant. So four times pi times two squared times, okay, dr dt is a thing that we don't know, dr dt. And on the other side, dv dt is 4.5. All right, so we get 4.5 equals 
2 squared is 4, 4 times 4 is 16, so 16 pi times dr dt, which means that 4.5 over 16 pi is dr dt. And we can simplify that out a little bit. It's about 0 0.090 feet per minute. We know it's feet per minute because radius is in feet, time is in minutes. Right. On future problems, we will learn how to write the sentences that go along with that. But the rate of change of the radius is a positive 0 0.090 feet per minute. Three decimal places for AP work. All right. Ripples in a pond. A pebble is dropped into a calm pond, causing ripples to form of um, concentric circles. Okay. So concentric circles is like a target, right? You have one circle two circles, three circles, and they keep moving outward. So that means that the radius is going to be bigger. The radius of the outer ripple is increasing at a constant rate of one foot per second. Okay. Um, when the radius is four feet, at what rate is the total area A of the disturbed water changing? So what kinds of things are they giving us? They're giving us that radius is four feet. We're going to need a DRDT, right? If you've got R here, put DRDT over here. We are told that the outer ripple radius is increasing at a rate of one foot per second. So if this is in feet, this should be in feet per second. That works, one foot per second. It's positive because it is increasing. All right, at what rate is the area of the disturbed water changing? So the disturbed water means all of the area that is inside of the biggest circle. And since this is the radius of the biggest circle, that's what we're gonna be finding. So area equals something, it's gonna be feet squared. Let's try DA DT. So the area is changing with respect to time as well. The area of the biggest circle should be increasing in size. That's what we want to find. At what rate is the total area? Rate of the area. So this is a thing that we don't know. Um, area is feet squared. Time is seconds. Okay. We probably, again, don't care the actual area, but I always write it there just in case. We are looking at areas of circles. Area of a circle is pi r squared. Okay, let's keep going. Let's take the derivative of both sides with respect to time, dA dt equals two pi r times derivative of r with respect to t, dr dt. We were told that r is four. And dr dt is a positive one. On the left side is dA dt still. Simplifying that out, dA dt equals eight pi. You do not have to multiply that out and then get a decimal. Just leave it if it's in terms of pi. So this is going to be, since it's dA dt, feet squared per second. Okay, the area of the circle is increasing at a rate of eight pi feet squared per second. That's it. Alrighty, falling ladder problem. Heck yeah, these guys show up all over the place as well. I feel like I keep saying that, but yeah, they do show up all over the place. Okay, I recommend actually pausing the video here in a second and grabbing something, grab like a, a ruler, grab something that is straight, and I want you to take it to a wall, to where your wall meets the floor. I'm gonna do this. This is gonna happen in this video. I grab a uh, thing that 
can find it. Okay. All right, so we've got a ladder, a fake ladder, it's totally a yardstick, that is leading up against a wall. Now what's going to happen is gravity is gonna kinda of take over and we're going to have the ladder slip down. So we can see that the bottom, the bottom of the ladder is about that far away, it's like maybe a foot away, and then the height of the ladder from here to there is maybe like two feet, something like that. Okay, now the top of the ladder is going to slip. So it's gonna slip down. And what's gonna happen then is that the base of the ladder is going to move away from the base of the wall. Let's try it. It's totally actually going to slip. This is the worst produced video that's ever been produced. It's like Blair Witch Project. Okay, so we kind of let the ladder move down. Okay, so maybe gravity is taking over, maybe it's something else, but at some point, the height of your ladder is going to be less and the distance between the base of the wall and the base of your ladder is, is going to be bigger. So the height is decreasing with respect to time and this distance between the base and the base is increasing with respect to time. What about the actual ladder, the length of the ladder? It's not changing at all. Okay, so since that is not changing, its rate is going to be zero because it's neither increasing nor decreasing. All right, let's go back to the board. for going on that field trip with me. Okay, a 50 foot ladder is leaning up against the side of a building. So let's get the side of a building. The ladder is 50 feet tall. So this right here is the ladder and it is 50 feet. The base of the ladder is pulled away from the wall of the building at a rate of three feet per second. So that is the rate of change of this distance down here. How fast is the top of the ladder falling? Top of the ladder up here is going to fall. So we want a rate there, question mark feet per second, and since it's falling, that rate is going to be negative. Okay, this is also happening when the base is 30 feet from the wall. So let's label, how about A, B, and C for the sides of a, oh my gosh, look at this, it is a right triangle. Because obviously all floors and walls are exactly 90 degree angles. Okay, so this right here, let's name it B because it's the base. Let's name this A because whatever. It could be H because it's the height, I don't care. And then this side is C, it's the hypotenuse of your right triangle. Huh, interesting, interesting. How are these three things related to each other? Well, we know this distance is 30 at this particular second. So B equals 30 right now, 30 feet. What about D, B, D, T? We know that B is increasing three feet per second. So positive three feet per second. What about C? C is 50 feet. It is always 50 feet, never changing. 
So its rate of change, dc, dt, is zero feet per second, in case we need that. A, we don't know what A is. Could we figure out what A is? Heck yeah, we could. This is a right triangle. If you have two sides, you can figure out the third side. Now, if one side is 30 and the hypotenuse is 50, the other side has to be 40. That's one of those Pythagorean triples. If you want to test it out in A squared plus B squared equals C squared, you will end up with A equals 40 after you subtract and take square roots and all that. Okay, we are looking for DA, DT, and we know it is negative something feet per second. Okay, get your labels all written out so that you don't have to search for them later. Okay. How fast is the top of the ladder falling when the base is 30 feet from the wall? Well, how are these letters A, B, and C related to each other? We have the Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to write that bigger so it's nice to take a derivative from A squared plus B squared equals C squared. If we take derivatives of A, B, and C with respect to time, we are going to be able to have A, B, C and all of these rates in our problem. Let's take a look. Derivative of A squared with respect to T. So that's going to be 2A times dA dt plus new term. Same thing over here. Derivative of B squared is 2B dB dt equals 2C times dc dt. We have five of these pieces of information and we're only missing da dt and that's the thing that we're looking for. So this is going to be 2 times a is 40 times da dt we don't know plus 2 times b is 30 times db dt is positive 3 equals 2 times c is 50 times dc dt is zero. All right, simplifying this out, we got 80 dA dt plus uh, da, da, nine times two, 180 equals 100 times zero is zero. Interesting. All right, let's get dA dt by itself. So we're gonna subtract 180 from both sides. This is just a um, two-step equation like in pre-algebra equation. So 80 dA dt equals negative 180. Divide both sides by 80 and you get dA dt equals negative 2.25 feet per second. Okay, we got a negative number here. We predicted that it would be a negative number. That's important because A, which is this height, is decreasing, so it should have a negative rate, okay? That's why I put the negative here. It's not because I'm picky. It's because I want to make sure that I get a negative, because if I don't get a negative, either I set up my equation wrong, I took a derivative wrong, or I just forgot to subtract and I added instead, okay? Simple mistakes that can be made can make that incorrect. All right, so we have found how fast the top of the ladder is moving or falling when the base is 30 feet from the wall. The next thing is, what is the acceleration of the top of the ladder at the same point? How do you find acceleration? Okay. Well, acceleration is going to be your second derivative. Second derivative. All right. 